most people around us uphold strong moral values. They are diligent, hardworking, they care for their families and contribute positively to society. However, a small percentage deviate from these values. They cheat, they attempt to take what is not rightfully theirs, they invade others' privacy and exploit others for personal gain, often at the expense of the honest and innocent. When this continues unchecked, some of the morally upright rise to the challenge. They become defenders, equipping themselves with knowledge, skills, determination, and unwavering ethics to protect others. In today's digital world, the time has come for more people to join this transformation. News reports from around the world highlight the seriousness of the issue. Fraudsters are stealing billions of dollars from people across all nations. No one is immune. Whether rich or poor, young or old, educated or uneducated, everyone is vulnerable to these scams. It's time to take a stand against this growing wave of frauds, scams, forgery and digital intrusions. We need to push these wrongdoers out of our lives for good. If you agree, watch the sessions from the Defense Against Dark Act series. Equip yourself with the knowledge, skills and mindset needed to safeguard yourself and your loved ones. At this point, if you are wondering whether you have the necessary background knowledge to follow these sessions, the answer is yes. If you have understood what you have covered so far, you will have no trouble grasping the rest of the material in this series. We will explain everything in simple terms, using examples to make things even clearer. As long as you are committed to building this awareness, you will gain the understanding you need. Now, one of the key things to grasp is how these fraudsters identify their targets and they set, and, uh, they set the traps to lure in their victims. Let's dive into that. Broadly, there are three types of cyber fraud attempts that are usually being tried out. First one is a sort of ad hoc attempt with the help of partial data breach about the victim and then organized attempts with larger data breach. And finally, the most severe one is organized attempt using direct hacking. For the scams being done using partial or larger data breach, the fraudster must be posing as either a willy share talking to you for your benefit or will be an imposter posing like, you know, friend or relative or they could pose like the law and order personnel or similar professionals associated to certain authority. For the case of direct hacking, however, the attacker would usually not need to come forward. They will remain anonymous even if they need to communicate with the victim. Now let's take a look at the examples of the data breaches. So what are the examples of partial data breach? the data that one can obtain by only looking at the e-commerce delivery packages just the envelope of it there is enough details available on top of the envelope you know the address the number the person and when it is getting delivered the time you know the availability of the person so there are a bunch of things that are available on the package itself similar kind of data is also available on the couriers, the post. Then there are other type of data that one can get from financial transactions or credit cards or debit cards. Now, just the card related information as it is visible on the card and uh, or in fact, for that matter, of financial transactions that have that have been carried out for certain purchase, etc. This also offers certain amount of data and this, this could be used for a certain type of ad hoc attempt. Now, there, there are other types of data available along with your vehicles as well. The vehicle registration, the smart, smart tags 
the stickers that uh, you typically uh, maintain on, on your vehicle so that you get entry to your society and uh, other places. Now, these are the data points that could also be used as uh, you know, making some ad hoc attempt, uh, some sort of ad hoc scam attempt. Similarly, you know, data obtained uh, on, on the physical bills that are getting delivered, like electricity bill, water supply bill, gas connection bill, and other similar services, there's a lot of information available there as well. Then uh, the data that usually we uh, offer uh, in certain uh, survey, like so some sort of public survey or some sort of lottery draw, we don't, you know, uh, we don't be, we, we don't get mindful about uh, sharing those data points. Now, those could as well be used against us. I mean, those could be the kind of data breach that could uh, be leveraged to create an ad hoc um, uh, scam attempt on us. Then, what are the examples of larger data breach? Any of these partial data breach situations we discussed, if you're combining a few of these together, then that combination becomes a candidate of a larger data breach. Now, some of the other examples. If a particular registration database of a website has been hacked, or certain application website, or certain online or offline service website, if the database, the profile database of that particular website has been hacked, this will offer a lot of data to the, uh, the fraudsters. So that's another example of larger data breach. Then uh, the data that a fraudster could obtain uh, if someone else's phone or laptop or computer has been hacked, uh, for whom you are one of the contacts. So it's not like your phone has been hacked, it's like someone else's phone has been hacked, but then you are in his or her contact list. And from that contact list, from that con you know, communication itself, there could be a decent amount of data about you which could be extracted. This could be uh, a larger data breach situation for you. Uh, even though your uh, device has not been hacked. Now, similarly, you know, similar kind of examples would be relevant for even uh, someone else's social media account, uh, private messaging account got hacked and you are uh, in one of the contact lists. And, uh, you know, the, the conversations and the chat and the messages and the voice messages, et cetera, if those are getting, um, uh, you know, if the fraudster is getting access to those, uh, those will be, uh, you know, considered as a larger data breach for, uh, for, for your, uh, you know, context itself. Then, uh, you know, a lot of people are providing a lot of information on job sites, social media posts, sometimes fundraising sites, or let's say matrimony sites or dating sites. And a lot of these uh, data points, if those are at all getting uh, breached in some way, uh, it could be used for sentiment analysis. You know, there are a lot of AI tools, AI technologies that could do that. And then victim profiling and behavior characterizations and these kind of, um, you know, uh, advanced techniques can be adopted on those set of breach data. And this would definitely be considered as a larger data breach. Then uh, the data that one can obtain from publicly available information, uh, like, you know, these... Uh, uh, the photographs that you have posted, uh, you know, the uh, check-ins that you have uh, advertised on in terms of, you know, going to a certain restaurants or hotels or resorts or, you know, uh, travel, uh, you know, the travel uh, blogs that you have created. So a lot of these publicly available information uh, about you, uh, you know, could as well be uh, transformed into a larger data breach if those are, you know, meticulously collected. If the fraudster is collecting uh, these data points and if they're getting access to a lot of these data points uh, they could uh, essentially culminate that into a larger data breach now what are the examples of direct hacking so direct hacking means you know the uh, hacker has uh, got access to your phone your sim card or your phone storage your laptop storage your computer your you know the particular hard disk that is uh, there in your laptops or computer so it's 
it's particularly your device you know if they're getting access to that illegal access to that then it will be considered as direct hacking if they are directly hacking into your social media account or messaging account or chat account that would also be considered as direct hacking then they could as well hack your application data or hack into your e-commerce account they can hack into your net banking account of course it's not going to be easy all of these are um, you know uh, rare situations but if at all god forbid such situation occurs then these would be the cases of direct hacking and similarly you know the uh, hacking into the card account or cloud storage account or digital locker account all of those would be considered as direct hacking and in general uh, the direct hacking cases are rare partial data breach cases are most frequent larger data breach cases are less frequent but those are uh, i mean there are quite a few cases that are coming um, in front of us quite frequently and direct hacking cases are extremely rare what are the best practices that one can follow to prevent these data breaches let's find out so let's take these uh, partial data breach situations like data obtained from e-commerce delivery package or couriers or post or you know from the physical bills the delivered uh, physical bills of elect electricity water supply gas connection etc so a couple of measures precautionary measures uh, would you know prevent from uh, the data breach to happen uh, make sure to turn and slice the name address and barcode part of the package envelope or the bill while disposing of and try using the soft copy for bills as much as possible to avoid deliveries of physical copies altogether then uh, if a certain delivery requires you to show id use a must id like must Aadhaar. and if you are receiving uh, some sort of sms or uh, whatsapp message to track or locate your package from an untrustworthy numbers uh, do not click on the link use the courier uh, companies or the delivery company's specified tracking method all right now what what are the prevention measures that one can adopt to avoid uh, the data getting breached from the cards or financial transactions uh, do not hand over the card to anybody always reach to the card swipe machine directly okay now uh, what about the precautionary measures for uh, data breach from car license plate smart tags and stickers well keep only the relevant stickers on the car and avoid keeping old stickers which are not in use and uh, for smart tags maintain a limit uh, the loaded value uh, the loaded money on the smart tag should be um, uh, limited and you should configure for manual loading of money as much uh, needed try and avoid auto loading if possible now in the context of uh, providing data uh, in in uh, public survey or lottery draw forms uh, clearly you know uh, the best practice is to avoid it altogether avoid sharing any personal details to any unknown person all right so now let's also take a look at the large data breach situations and let's try to find out what would be the precautionary measures for them so um as we were discussing earlier there, there are situations where a website's registration database could get hacked or it could be a uh, you know some sort of application website some sort of services related website and your data could be among that profile databases right i mean it could be in, in that profile database it could have some details and that could be uh, misused so when you are creating your profile in some of these services uh, databases or services website 
you should try and keep only minimum required profile information and you, you should uh, use available website application configurations to restrict the visibility of your data as much as possible whatever mechanisms are supported by the particular website to restrict your profile visibility uh, definitely you know uh, apply those methods to restrict the visibility definitely try and secure uh, the information as much uh, methods are supported by these websites now the case where your data is you know illegally getting access from someone else's phone or laptop where you are in the other person's contact list uh, the best practice is to reduce the exposure of your profile data to your contacts so you should you know restrict maintaining too much of profile data of your contacts as well like for example when you are uh, setting up your contact list when you are adding details of your friends and relatives try and only keep the minimum amount of data that you would actually need and uh, try and avoid keeping a lot of data that essentially could uh, expose uh, the person's you know um, uh, information uh, if at all it ever gets hacked so reducing the exposure reducing the amount of data that is associated to the prof profile is definitely one practice that needs to be followed and uh, let's say if someone is in your contact list uh, from your school or college friend or office colleagues or business associate, uh, try maintaining limited information about them in your phone beyond name, number, and email. Now, in the context of data that could get uh, breached from someone's hacked social media profile or private message, uh, messaging account or chat account where you are in one of the contacts, um, the best practice would be for you to avoid sharing your um, uh, voice recordings in the chat group in which you're already sending text messages so if you're already sending text messages uh, if if you're uh, avoiding to send your voice messages that way in case that particular group uh, data gets hacked i mean uh, uh, somebody would not get access to your text as well as your voice because the moment it is both it increases the exposure so um, also try to avoid sharing too many of your pictures from different angles right and try to avoid uh, sharing too much of information about yourself your daily routines travel history personal preference social political viewpoints and emotions and maintain a level of abstractions in uh, these areas that's the best practice as much as can be followed then data obtained from publicly available information itself would also become uh, a source of rich data uh, so in these cases the precautionary measures would be to uh, prepare content and publish the features yourself but try using a different tone of speaking from your normal speaking tone avoid posing from different angles in front of the camera unless it is absolutely needed for content creation avoid showing yourself in too many different movements like walking running sitting exercising and mannerisms that is normal to you uh, try and reduce these exposures as much as possible so if there were ways to completely prevent data breaches you could consider yourself fully protected from digital intruders unfortunately no solution is 100 percent foolproof while it's crucial to take foundational steps for security we also need to be prepared to manage scams and attacks if we become targets upcoming sessions will cover how to handle these situations stay tuned